Hey guys, so before talking about the vector form for the quadratic approximation of multivariable functions, uh, I've got to introduce this thing called the Hessian matrix. Hessian matrix. And essentially what this is, it's just a way to package all the information of the second derivatives of a function. So let's say you have some kind of multivariable function, uh, like, I don't know, like the example we had in the last video, e to the x halves multiplied by sine of y, so some kind of multivariable function. What the Hessian matrix is, and it's often denoted with an H, or kind of a bold-faced H, um, is it's a matrix, <laughs> incidentally enough, that contains all the second partial derivatives of f. So the first component is going to be the partial derivative of f with respect to x kind of twice in a row. And everything in this first column, it's kind of like you first do it with respect to x. Because um, the next part is the second derivative where first you do it with respect to x, and then you do it with respect to y. So those, that's kind of the first column of the matrix. And then up here, it's the partial derivative where first you do it with respect to y, and then you do it with respect to x, and then over here, it's where you do it with respect to y both times in a row. So partial with respect to y both times in a row. So let's go ahead and actually compute this and think about what this would look like in the case of our specific function here. Uh, so in order to get all the second partial derivatives, we first should just kind of keep a record of the first partial derivatives. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x, uh, the only place x shows up is in this e to the x halves. Kind of bring down that one half, e to the x halves, and sine of y just looks like a constant as far as x is concerned sine of y. And then the partial derivative with respect to y, partial derivative of f with respect to y, now e to the x halves looks like a constant, and it's being multiplied by something that has a y in it, e to the x halves. Um, and the derivative of sine of y, since we're doing it with respect to y, is cosine of y. Cosine of y. Uh, so these terms won't be included in the Hessian itself, but we're kind of just kind of keeping a record of them. Because now, when we go in to fill in the matrix, this upper left component, we're taking the second partial derivative where we do it with respect to x, then x again. So up here, is, up here is when we did it with respect to x. If we did it with respect to x again, we kind of bring down another half. So that becomes 1 fourth by e to the x halves. And that sine of y just still looks like a constant. Sine of y. And then this mixed partial derivative where we do it with respect to x, then y. So we did it with respect to x here. When we differentiate this with respect to y, the 1 half e to the x halves just looks like a constant, but then derivative of sine of y ends up as cosine of y. And then up here, uh, it's going to be the same thing, but let's kind of see how it, when you do it in the other direction, when you do it first with respect to y, then x. So over here, we did it first with respect to y. If we took this derivative with respect to x, you'd have the half would come down. So that would be 1 half e to the x halves uh, multiplied by cosine of y because that just looks like a constant since we're doing it with respect to x the second time. So that would be cosine of y. And uh, it shouldn't feel like a surprise that both of these terms turn out to be the same. Uh, with most functions, that's the case. Technically, not all functions. You can come up with some uh, crazy things where this won't be symmetric, where you'll have different terms in the diagonal. Um, but for the most part, those you can kind of expect to be the same. Uh, and then this last term here, where we do it with respect to y twice, we now think of taking the derivative of this whole term with respect to y, that e to the x halves looks like a constant, and derivative of cosine is negative sine, negative sine of y. So this whole thing, a matrix, each of whose components is a multivariable function, is the Hessian. This is the Hessian of f. And sometimes people will write it as Hessian of f, kind of specifying what function it's of. And you could think of this, I mean, you could think of it as a matrix-valued function, which feels kind of weird, but you, you know, you plug in two different values, x and y, and you'll get a matrix. So it's this matrix-valued function. And the nice thing about writing it like this is that you could actually extend it so that rather than just for functions that have two variables, let's say you had a function, you know, I'll kind of like clear this up. Let's say you had a function that had uh, three variables or four variables or kind of any number. So let's say it was, you know, a function of x, y, and z. Then you can follow this pattern and uh, following down the first column here, the next term that you would get would be the second partial derivative of f where first you do it with respect to x and then you do it with respect to z. And then over here, it would be the, the second partial derivative of f, where first you did it with respect to, uh, first you did it with respect to y, and then you do it with respect to z. I'll clear up 
even more room here, uh, because you'd have another column where you'd have the second partial derivative where this time everything, you know, first you do it with respect to z and then with respect to x. And then over here you'd have the second partial derivative uh, where first you do it with respect to z and then with respect to y. And then as the very last component you'd have the second partial derivative where first you do it with respect to, well I guess you, you do it with respect to z twice. So this whole thing, this three by three matrix would be the Hessian of a three variable function. And you can see how you could extend this pattern where if it was a four variable function, you'd get a four by four matrix of all of the possible second partial derivatives. And if it was a 100 variable function, you would have a 100 by 100 matrix. So the nice thing about having this is then we can, we can talk about that by just referencing the symbol. And we'll see in the next video how this makes it very nice to express, for example, the quadratic approximation of any kind of multivariable function, not just a two variable function. And the symbols don't get way out of hand because you don't have to reference each one of these individual components. You can just reference the matrix as a whole and start doing matrix operations. Um, and I will see you in that next video.